Coming up on the DMT 1 to 1 show, episode 73 on the 3rd of September 2014, a feature on social music apps developer's mule featuring Ginny Yang, chief product and design officer and Turner Kirk, artist relations manager at the company. This week's show is brought to you by Play MPE. Check out daily.plaympe.com for the latest Play MPE releases, charts, news and more. Uh, hello everyone and welcome to the DMT 1 to 1 show and it's a real pleasure today uh, to welcome uh, Ginny Yang, uh, Chief Product Officer and uh, Chief Design Officer uh, at the Smule. So hi uh, Ginny and thanks for joining me, how's it going? Thank you, thank you for having us. It's a real pleasure to have you and uh, also it's uh, great uh, to welcome uh, Turner Kirk uh, who is uh, uh, you know, the, the head essentially of the artist uh, uh, program that's just been launched. So hi Turner and thanks for joining me. How's it going? Very, very well, thank you. It's a little early, but it's all right. <laughs> and if you are, if you are listening to the uh, video version, uh, sort of to the audio version of the show, you're actually missing out because Turner has got an amazing uh, amount of gear uh, just behind him. So uh, <laughs> that's right. I always go with my gear, Shawnee. Nice. <laughs> I, love I love it. I think we should do an entire show like that, and that would be, that would be pretty <laughs> awesome. And uh, and so you know. Today, you know, Smule, of course, is a company that I've known for uh, years and uh, a lot of years, uh, but uh, we're going to concentrate on uh, uh, the new program that you just launched. Uh, but first, I want to start with a little bit of a background. Essentially, you know, Smule is a company that has uh, some fantastic games. You know, people that are uh, listening to this may, uh, you know, Ha will probably have played Magic Piano, Synchroki, Guitar, Autorap, Songify, Ocarina, Madpad, uh, uh, Ladida, and the I Am T-Pain app, any of those essentially. And, uh, uh, you know, it's a company that has created a huge amount of value around music and gaming, and it's probably arguably one of the few successful companies in this field because uh, it's a difficult nut to crack really. And uh, first of all, how, when did you first realize that uh, there was a community that was building around uh, the Smule games and that, that, that was creating something special essentially? Well, um, Turner, I'll go first, but I also just want to say that Turner, along with being head of artist relations, has seen Smule from the very beginning. So he was, right. I think he's a number, I think you're the second or third <laughs> longest employee here. So he definitely has a lot of color from the beginning of, of the things. But I guess from definitely my perspective, I feel like Smule has, from the very beginning, had this idea of the community because even yeah. as early as the Ocarina app, there's always the idea of the globe. I think one of the visions was to show that there's people around the world and you could, even if you don't, you may not know who they are, you could hear their boy, their yeah. breath and playing the ocarina. So this idea there's really looking at the, the world as a community, everybody playing in, um, music in their, in their apps. So Yeah, and, and I, I, kinda, I remember that uh, maybe uh, 18 months ago, so I read an article that was talking about the fact that it, you picked up essentially on the fact that there were all these communities that were popping up on Facebook of people collaborating. So how did that sort of affect the, the, the way that you brought the product forward? The Facebook community has really started developing when, with the Sing Karaoke app, when people were able to really sing together and they were started to collaborate together. And then we started noticing they were paying us, they were creating these things to try to communicate with each other because really what um, they were looking for even further ways to go deeper. And that's when we realized that there's um, really a or organic thing happening a lot. And really music is just the core thing. And so part of that is just <laughs> that it drives people to want to connect even more, even deeper. Exactly. Um, Turner, what do you think? I think they reached out to you probably initially a lot. Yeah, yeah. The first, I mean, the first uh, example of community, I think, was definitely back around the uh, the ocarina. We did, a, we did a contest, actually. It was called This Contest Blows Contest. Um, because it was involving, you know, playing ocarina, blowing into the phone. And uh, so that was kind of the beginning of it all. And we got some really, really amazing videos out of that contest. And, um, you know, people people kind of, there was a number of cases where there were multiple people playing together. And uh, it just kind of showed that, you know, music, this music thing is very human. It's very uh, much lends itself to creating community just on its own. And then I think when the Glee app came out, that was really one of the first apps that allowed people to communicate through the app more than just musically. And uh, we started seeing lots and lots of people connecting and having meetups and things like that. 
That's great. And so, you know, I'm taking this sort of uh, fun. Uh, I'm starting from from how people were using the app, so that we can lead into how artists may plug into this system. But uh, so, as far as uh, how the collaboration platform works uh, today, so uh, how do people interact with each other? What are the main ways people haven't played uh, Smule games yet that that the community interacts uh, uh, within your ecosystem? So there's a basic, uh, our whole platform allows users to do the basic social networking aspects. They could love, they could follow across users, they could comment on people's performances. And the user's profile identity is, um, it's the same profile, wh whichever app they go into. So yeah. if you're in Sing, you, you go into AutoRap, it has your profile and the followers go across it. So we add all that, but in addition, I think different than other um, user-generated content social networks, um, when someone puts out a performance, you could actually join it and actually now you have a duet or group song together and Autorab you could actually join it and actually directly interact with that piece of content and together create something awesome. different. So unlike a photo or video, et cetera, where you could love, comment and follow, which we do have, you actually could create a derivative almost together, collaboratively create work. In piano and guitar, you could play along with the performers, the singers yeah. as well. As, so. That's fantastic, yeah. and uh, obviously, if you go on, on smule.com, you can find a lot of those collaborations. Actually, you can browse through uh, a lot of that, is, which is uh, which is awesome. And uh, uh, Turner, so looking at how artists started getting involved in the company, I, I would imagine that uh, in first instance, when you started doing stuff like Magic Piano and you wanted to add more pieces of content that may have been copyrighted or may have been owned by different people, that was probably the first point of contact of the company with the world of of artists and and rights holders and how all that kind of uh, uh, worked. And that from then, maybe the first collaboration collaboration started working is that is that about right um yeah well i mean i guess the first er official example of us working with an artist was when t-pain uh contacted right. us and that was back in 2000 sorry my camera's doing weird things <laughs> uh nice. that was back in uh, uh 2009 um just after wow. we had released oh, ocarina in yeah. 2008 yeah yeah, yeah so um but yeah, I mean, we we definitely um, to your point though. Yeah, we we certainly do a lot of um, licensing, and that definitely connects us with you know the major. We have deals with all the major labels and um, stuff like that to to get licenses to these songs, and that definitely gets our name out there a little bit. But I think T Pain T Pain had seen the success we had with Ocarina. And he he called us up. His people called us up and said, "Hey, we want to do we want to do auto tune on on the iPhone. Let's make it happen." And uh, it was pretty cool. I I've got to meet him a number of times, and uh, and got to go to the Ellen show with him when he was on there talking about our app. Um, but yeah, I mean, he was he was definitely the the first the first one. Or should I say, it was T Pain was the first <laughs> artist that we ever worked with. Yeah, nice. so that's nice. that's my ode to him. That's appropriate. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah, and then out of that, uh, I mean, that was before we had the, the whole platform that we have now. I mean, we still have the T Pain app, but um, what we offer now is is much greater. It's not just for one one person, although. I still really love T Pain. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so uh, you did a few collaborations, I guess, over the years, uh, other than T Pain, uh, around the, the you know the, the games and, and everything else. And so, how did those sort of lead into the thinking towards a more cohesive platform thought for artists or, or platform design, where you could have a you know a much larger scale in, in the number of artists that you could accommodate essentially on on, on Smule? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that just happened very organically right. through um, you know the platform that uh, that Genie has essentially created. Uh, it's it's basically, I mean, we we created this this system for people collaborating, creating music, and um, you know it kind of starts with sing karaoke. Um, I mean, I know that the other apps came out prior to that, or at least uh, Magic Piano came out prior to that, but um, sing karaoke really blew open the doors for it because that showed that um, you can really create music together with people. We, we only added Sing Jams, um, which is where it allows um, Magic Piano to, to uh, play the piano accompaniment to vocals. We only added that in the past couple of months. Um, but Sing came out two years ago, and uh, that really um, kind of just showed that anyone could get on there, create an account, and start making music together with other people. And um, it was pretty It was pretty quickly after that we realized, wow, this would be great for artists. But it took... Um, and actually, we, we started off, we launched the app with a promotion um, with Austin Mahone. So that was kind of... And then we did a promotion with Lady Antebellum. 
And um, so we worked with a number of artists right off the bat um, once that app came out and just provided us a really good platform for that. Since then, we've added a lot more features that make it even easier Absolutely. to work with them. Uh, and Ginny, on, on the when it comes to sort of understanding how that trade-off would happen, you know, how did you explore, how, how did you look at the product when it came to, for example, integrating features that may help artists monetize their music outside of the game? And, and you know, were you sort of worried about how that would play out? Or, or, or what, what was your thinking around the product design yeah. for that? Oh, yeah. So um, maybe you've allowed me to just go back a little bit. I sure. kind of want to bring up T-Pain. Um, that was actually the app when it launched when I really um, kind of motivated myself to get off my um, fun employment butt and apply to Smeal. <laughs> I heard about Smeal through Ocarina and I am T-Pain launch. And for me, there was really something that Smeal was already trying to do with artists and the way it's participating. Actually, actually anecdotally, after I joined and turn a Kurt Crawl, right? You know, you could hear that, you know, we were sort of the first in trying to actually license the music and pay the artists. And anecdotally, we had um, people weren't actually, they were like, what? Um, it was actually that first time trying to get the licensing and getting all that. Or they were like, wait, you're not actually trying to uh, sneak by. You're actually trying to pay the artists and actually kind of breaking that ground and working with the um, labels and figuring that out. But yeah. actually, just even the name of the app itself, I am T-Paying, I think, it, th there was, um, I think the vision of that uh, at the time was that the users could become and be uh, sort of break down a barrier of the barrier between artists and their fans and right. have the users be as soothed about um, playing with music. So I think that was really cool and that was really what also drew me. So I think that was the C was always there. And so to your questions on the trade off on the platform when we we're building it, um, when we started building the platform, realizing, and I think one of the main things is that. You know, we, we definitely do get a lot to ask to be like, okay, could we create just a, another artist-specific app? Yeah. Like get another T-Pain app. But what we realized was that the potential and benefit is actually creating this platform and let the artists and anyone be able to leverage it and leverage it fans. So the main thing was also to initially needing to grow this community and also getting um, the users to realize they could partic participate in music. I think Jeff, our CEO, I think often says that... Um, I think one of the things that, he, that when he started a company was that sort of the recording industry maybe actually, in a way, made music more passive than what it was before, um, where music is much more participatory and people could be involved. So what we really focused on initially was getting users to participate and yeah. getting users to understand sort of the power and platform. It definitely in early days, I think, Turner, you, you must remember, we were trying to figure out, you know, how do we get the artists, their YouTube links, their uh, links out to their uh, iTunes sales, et cetera. And it definitely warred initially because we're starting out this platform. I think we're trying to get people to understand what it is, what it means to collaborate and participate. And in a way, um, Initially, it was too early, perhaps, to, you know, we needed to test out what people liked and what people needed to do. So we started, um, I would say we actually have some of those <laughs> features of how do we drive more promotions. And then now we're really able to leverage. But when we first started off, um, we didn't really fully understand how the fans would like to participate. We didn't fully understand how um, the musicians and artists um, would need to. So we kind of built initially just traditional link outs, like, you know, pop up right. an ad, take them out to their uh, iTunes sales or take them out to YouTube page. And I think that wasn't, and that was good, but it wasn't, I think, as, as fully integrated as now we had this platform that really, truly gets the uh, artists, participants, and musicians. And now we can actually leverage more. There's a lot of stuff that Turner is now doing with this program, actually, to push to understand how that engagement happens yeah. and how this is a new type of engagement that actually helps drive the artist reach and get them uh, more known by the fans. So um, just back to your question, initially, the priority is very hard. <laughs> I would say, I'm but sure, I think yeah. the initial focus that we need to build this um, platform, and we need to get this out, get the community really, get the users really, and show that first, and then. Um, then that's uh, the follow. Yeah. And, and uh, to yeah. Turner on, on your front, so how how are you? how are your conversations with artists going since you announced this of course I'm sure you had a, a big spike of interest uh, in artists wanting to get involved in this uh, so what, what's the process uh, uh, what's the application like is it easy to get involved and, and uh, all that yeah yeah we've had we've had a substantial amount of uh, inquiries actually we we put out put up a page um, smule.com slash I think it's artist program. Shoot, I should know this. Um, it's a really <laughs> yeah, beautiful it page, uh, <laughs> but basically that kind of outlines some of the things that um, that that we can do on our platform and has has a way for people to send in, send in inquiries. We've had a ton. Um, I haven't looked at them 
in the past day, so I don't know how many total, but yeah. uh, there are a lot. And uh, essentially, yeah, we um, I've been very overloaded. <laughs> but uh, these conversations go, they start with just kind of trying to give uh, an overview of what, what can be done on our platform because it's a new thing. People don't, um, you know, haven't really heard of, of this before. Um, karaoke uh, is not necessarily something that artists probably thought they'd be doing with their song, but it's more than just karaoke. It's yeah. it's, it's it's a lot more than that. It's creative, collaborative music making with with fans. So so first, you know, the, it starts off explaining that this is a way for you to create music with your fans, create this very deep connection with them, centered around your music, as opposed to other um, you know social platforms. Uh, that uh, that that allow you to communicate with them just text based. This is yeah. an actual musical communication, which is really cool. Um, and I guess the the um, sorry, the link is smule dot com slash smule artists. Yeah, I was gonna say that. I, I just found it. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, yeah. So that's that's how that's how the uh, the conversation begins. Just kind of going over um, what we have because they they see this this thing and they're like, hey, we heard you have an artist program. Tell us about that. Yeah. And then it kind of goes into um, licensing. We have to get get that figured out first and foremost because it's a it's a promotional thing. So they have to decide: do they want to you know provide their song for free to access a larger number of people, or do they want to try and make royalties on it, which is totally an option as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then after that, it's just figuring out um, how many uh, uh, how many people we're trying to reach, who they're trying to reach, and uh, get a bunch of people um, involved in the in the conversation. And so it starts again, starts with sing karaoke. Um, they sing their song in there, uh, put in the the back background instrumental track for their song. Uh, we license the master, and um, then that. A week later, will go. Uh, their vocal part will go into Magic Piano and Guitar, um, where people can then accompany them. And and both points along the way, we can we can put like uh, advertisements in there for for YouTube or to download their iTunes link or you know all sorts of things. And there's been a, there's been a lot of great response to that. That's great. And of, of course, it, 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 it all ties back into your user database. And if you know already what people have purchased or used in the past, uh, what songs they like to play, then you can more easily recommend to them artists that may not be on the same profile as some of the major ones that you have, but that may fit that bill in terms of tastes. Definitely. Yeah, totally. That's great. Yeah, def And then just to circle back on your question about uh, the features that we've built on the platform are artists, and that's one of the things that Turner as well is finding out that now we have more artists that we can actually serve as to what features would make sense, what are the things that would make sense for artists to understand um, sort of the impact with their, um, with their fans. Whereas in the past, you know, when we just had one artist like Austin Mahone, Lady Antebella, and they may have different needs and requests and um, just overall for the various artists. So that's a lot of stuff that Turner is also doing in finding out what is it that they need that we can now really build on the platform to help the artists as well. Yeah. Uh, which, yeah. yeah and at Turner, it sounds like a lot of work. I hope you have a, a, a team to work with you on this because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, did, I did licensing in, in, uh, a couple of years back for this kind of project, and it's, uh, it, it, it does take a, lot a long time. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm definitely not doing this on my own. That would be that would be suicide. But um, no, this is, I have I have a lot of really great people to work with, Cheney included. Um, uh, and yeah, we have a licensing department, which is mostly sure. just one guy. But uh, yeah, it's a full time job. Licensing is a full time job, as you well know. And uh, so, thankfully, I'm I don't have to. I can focus more on the big picture, and uh, I have a lot of really amazing people to work with at this company. Yeah, it's fantastic. And so, uh, you know, going forward, uh, have you ha have you what has been the feedback like as far as uh, you know? Have you already rolled out a few artists uh, to your fans, uh, to to your users, uh, and what has the feedback been like since since you properly released this essentially? Yeah, I mean, feedback has been has been. Awesome. Uh, I think the best feedback you can get is people engaging, people you know singing songs with the artist, playing songs with the artist, and uh, the I mean the numbers are in the millions, uh, mostly in Magic Piano of people who are experiencing these new songs. Um, I, I think the coolest thing that we've done. I mean we've we've worked very directly with a band called Flagship from uh, from North Carolina. Um, in the past couple of weeks, basically they were they were our first um, artist that we launched with. 
and they've uh, not only have people really, really um, enjoyed singing with them, and it's been visible because people will sing a song with them and then comment on it, and then they'll play a song with them in Magic Piano and want to listen to the real song, they'll go to YouTube. And so if you go to their YouTube video for the song, Are You Calling?, you'll see all of these comments that are just like, oh, I love this. You guys should be famous. And like the band has told us that they really love the feedback. It's, it's this, you know, again, it's, it's focused very directly on their music and where their music exists on yeah. YouTube or on iTunes reviews or, or whatever. And then, of course, on our platform, they can comment on things, too. And um, so, yeah, the, con the, the conversation sticks to their song and their music, and it's all about that, and the band gets really great feedback on that. They've also seen uh, about a 490% increase uh, in sales. Um, wow. The sound, sound scan numbers came in. Um, so, Amazing. Yeah, and, and their, their YouTube views on that video have doubled. So it's... it's uh, it's it's been very fruitful all around. Yeah, it's going it's going really well. And obviously, uh, I think uh, managers and artists are hearing these figures will be wanting to get in touch. But uh, uh, you know, don't don't get too restless because I know Turner probably has an exploding inbox, and it, it might take a little while to get back for, for him to get back to you <laughs> at this point. Uh, but uh, you know, I think it's, it's such an amazing program, and and I love the fact you know. There's a lot of companies that have come and gone in the music gaming space, or uh, you know, that tied music to gaming. But a lot of them were trying to build. Uh, value off the back of artists fan bases which and, and you're going about it the other way around you've created a huge fan base of users of your apps and uh, uh, you're just trying to help artists uh, find a home with some of those users and, and see if they can you know increase their fan base that way so uh, i really like your approach in, in that sense because you know you've definitely created your own success with the products and you know this is a, a good way to you know just create a bigger circle of value for everybody involved so uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next few months uh, talking about products uh, of course uh, you're not going to be able to reveal anything uh, much but as far as uh, you know are, are you thinking of uh, are there any major product categories that you're working on uh, for the future of course uh, uh, you probably won't be able to tell me which ones they are but is there anything in the in the near future that, that you're you're excited about that you're working on well, actually, I think one of the things that that is <laughs> that well, that was so turn of me. I think one of the major I was pointing things at her. I, I can't talk about. <laughs> well, there's a lot that we're thinking and working on, but I think one of the major things that's that's something that we continue to push forward is actually, I think a lot of people start seeing Smeo initially as games, as sort of these individual apps. But really, I think from the very beginning, um, even before I joined, this vision was very strong it's about a community and platform that connects people through music to collaborating on music. So a lot of our efforts actually is actually building out this community and platform and what are the further ways of actually engaging people, bringing people in to find out about it. Yeah. Really look on the apps as sort of portals for people to kind of lower the barrier initially, people who don't think they can make or play with music to kind of come in. And then it's sort of like once they come in, there's a little bit like, oh, wow, I didn't know there's that. And you, as they connect with people and they discover this community and platform behind it. So I think when you say product categories, I guess a lot of what, what um, we are thinking is how do we actually really um, become truly this community and platform. Uh, uh, all these like, for apps are actually furthering these connections, furthering these um, social connections between, um, between users and artists, between users and users. And actually, I think the other thing that's really interesting about um, the artist program that, you know, we're not just looking at established artists as well. We're also looking to see if there are artists emerging from our community, because there are users who are sort of, they were started out as bedroom singers going, oh, wow, I used to sing a lot, give that up. And now they come onto our community. They have more fans than some of the artists that we established. And actually, for one of these partner artists, for them to get uh, their song sung by one of our super users in our community who have way more followers gets them more um, more um, renowned in a way, actually. And so um, one of the things that we definitely are looking forward to is actually how do we um, actually launch even and help you know, people discover and become artists. And that's one of the reasons actually the page is called Smeal Artists. We have some grand ambitions on whether you know, we actually could help um, you know produce artists and help them actually and we really just our goal is actually to get um, more just help more people get known and, 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 and heard 
That's so, great. so it's yeah. not, not just a game, but uh, actually promotes creativity, which is uh, uh, definitely something I like to hear. And uh, and so that's that's that. I think uh, you know, of course, I would encourage everybody to go and check out uh, smule.com slash smule artists uh, and smule.com in general. Any of the games, uh, uh, they are great fun. So if you haven't had a chance to check them out yet, you, and you work in the industry, as you probably are, if you're listening to this podcast, you definitely should. And so uh, go and check check that out. And uh, again, it was Jeannie and Turner. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you so much, Andrea, for having us. It's a pleasure. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Thing with flagship. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. great having you. And uh, uh, thanks so much for listening to the DMT One to One Show that comes out every week, and we interview interesting uh, digital music uh, companies, uh, both startups, established companies, and interesting projects. You can find it on digitalmusictrends.com and follow through the links to the One to One Show. Thanks so much for listening. Have a fantastic week, and uh, till next time. If you enjoyed watching or listening to the show and would like to find more, head on to digitalmusictrends.com.